Well, it's, um, what is today? It's, I don't know. Forget. Anyways, I'm going to be preaching the gospel out in front of the old, uh, U Ukiah, uh, brewing, uh, community pervert hangout spot. Um, I did do some preaching today out in front of, well, Walmart there for about two hours, maybe two and a half hours of preaching there. Um, yeah, I posted some videos on uh, on TikTok. I th they took three of them down for community guideline violations. You know, they're really trying to protect these perverts um, today. So, you know, oh well. If I lose my account, TikTok account, I lose it. No big deal. Um, I'm still going to go proclaim the gospel uh, by any means necessary. So... Let it be by any means necessary. Praise the living God. Let's see if I can't prop this. Prop this to the where I want it to be. Praise the living God. Yeah, it's crazy, but these perverts really hate me. So, oh, well, I love them. I hope they repent. Praise the living God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Another beautiful day. Another day to give your life to the Lord before it's too late. So there's that time coming when it's going to be too late. Uh, at the moment you take your last breath. Um, it's too late. It's over. It's done. Your faith, your soul, and where you're going to stay is going to be sealed on that day. There's going to be no more grace and mercy on the day when you take your last breath. If you're not living for the Lord now, you're going to perish. You're living in a creation that was created by God, a holy and righteous God. The Lord Jesus Christ is the creator of all things. And He gives you a free will. What are you doing with your free will today? Are you using it to glorify your flesh? To satisfy your own needs and your own pleasures? Are you living for the world? Are you seeking out the things of the world? Or are you seeking the Lord Jesus Christ by being obedient to His gospel and obeying it? Living by the Word of God. That's the living Word, the life. It's salvation. The gospel of Jesus Christ leads to salvation. To eternal life with Him. Imagine being with the Lord in eternity. Or you can just be separated from God and live as the world lives. You can be a friend of the world and be an enemy of God. That's your free will choice. But you're not going to inherit God's kingdom if you're not willing to forsake your, your life of this world and live a holy and righteous life under the Lord and live how you bring you to be. He created you in his image. Going to a pervert restaurant is not going to help you on the day of judgment. What will help you on the day of judgment is if you separated yourself from the world and started living according to the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
praise the living God. Praise the living God today. We are so thankful. A lot of the Christians are thankful for John 3.16. But yet, you don't listen or obey or open up the rest of the Word of God. You think their whole salvation program is based on, for God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, the Bible speaks of how God says loved, you know, L-O-V-E-D, past tense. For God so loved the world, past tense. But now Jesus Christ commands all men everywhere to turn from their sins. It's actually a commandment of God that you are to obey the gospel. To live, to go and sin no more. The Lord Jesus Christ literally said that twice. Go and sin no more. In red. When God doubles something up in his gospel, he means it. When God says, go and sin no more, you better go and sin no more. Are you willing to sacrifice your sin? Are you willing to give up your sin? Are you willing to turn from your sin and start serving a holy God? You have a free will. You don't have to. He made a place for you. It's a place where he is not. But there's some good news, man your life to the Lord and start obeying Him. Stop living in sin. Stop being drunkards and perverts and potheads. It's a shame for a man to have long hair, sir. Did you know that? It's for a woman. It's for a woman. It's a covering for a woman. Look at that woman you're with. She's covered up very well. God bless you, ma'am. But you need to find yourself a godly man. A man that's going to bring you up in the Lord. Praise the living God. And let's that your son. Unless that's your son, is that your son or is that your man, your husband? Are you married? That's all right, sir. I see that figure all the time because I preach holiness. You don't like holiness. God bless you, sir, and your middle finger. God bless you. God bless you. Turn your life over to the Lord. Stop hanging out in pervert restaurants. Have a nice day, sir. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Hey, I love you, man. I want you to be saved. I want you to turn your life over to the Lord. Stay away from Pervert Restaurant, sir. Stay away from Pervert Restaurant, sir. Have a nice day, sir. God bless. God bless. Yes, the living God is angry with the wicked every day. Did you know that? No, you don't know. You don't know that. Because the world is teaching you today that it's okay to live in your sin. That Jesus still loves you. You know the Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. Whether the wicked, if, well, that's you. You're living in sin. You're wicked. Drunker. Porno free. Drug addict. Cigarette smoker. Those of you that curse out the preacher for preaching what's right, what God says in His Word. He who justifies the wicked, He who condemns the judge. The Bible says you're both an abomination under the Lord. Praise the living God. In fact, if you get to hear what truth is, then you can start submitting to it. Don't submit to me. I'm not here to be submitted to. But I'm here to tell you that there is one to be submitted to, and his name is Jesus Christ. And he has a word. It's called the King James Bible. And all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Praise the living God today. Praise the living God the fact that he gives you a book. And what do you do? You rebel against him. You push his book off. You keep pushing his book off. His holy book. The one that's gonna, the one book that'll set you free and you push it away. Well, what do you think is gonna happen the moment you take your last breath? You're gonna really know that it's too late then, aren't you? And you're gonna know that eternity is there, aren't you? Eternal life is coming. Right now you're on time. That's precious, graceful, merciful time that God gives every living sinner the opportunity to turn from their sins, and what do you do? You ignore it? You call into God, you say, God, I, I, I love you, please forgive me, but then what do you do? You go back to your sin? Is that what you do? You go back to your sin and smack God in the face every day? I know how it is. I used to do it. I used to smack God in the face for 44 years. I was a lukewarm Christian. Thank you, God. Not, not knowing whether or not I was good or not, but I always go back to Lord Christ and I go back to my sin. I go back to my sin. And then I, you know, and then one day I just get there and sing up for the Lord. One day 
I should totally forsake all my sins. And then I knew, I knew that I was walking a holy life. Because God says in His Word, without holiness, no man will see God. Literally, the Bible says that. So if you, if you willingly turn from your sins, like you willingly give into your sins, um, you have a free will choice. If you truly really choose this day whom you're going to serve. You want to serve the Lord in the world? The Bible talks about you in Revelation 3.16. Whether you be hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, the Lord Jesus Christ will vomit you out of his mouth. Very simple to understand. If you're living in sin, the Lord's going to vomit you out of his mouth. You want to be vomited out of the Lord's mouth on that day? Would you stand or bow hand and foot by the holy angels on the day of judgment? And you chose to live a life of sin, of self-gratification? A life full of pride and of a perversion. Are you willing? Are you? You're going to sacrifice your eternal soul for a little bit of sin pleasure, rather than live a holy life and be glorified by the Creator of all things, the one that literally spoke this world into existence in six days, and you'd rather live for the creation rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. It sounds like you're pretty much on a losing deal. It is a losing deal. You are a losing deal if you're not willing to sacrifice your sin and start obeying the creed. The one who created you and formed you in your mother's womb. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The one who issued you to scope of the glory and become a man and died for the sins of the world. You know who I'm talking about. 2024. After what? After what? The death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what does the world do? The world serves the world. You give in to the perversions of the world. You establish your business with the perverts, the, the protected perverts. in our generation today, they're the ones that are going to be sinning. They're going to hellfire. Hellfire is coming for all you people that are not obeying the gospel and, and living a, a holy life and not turning from your sin. If you are living in sin, you are a slave to sin. And the fact that you're still in God's house and you're still living in sin, you better take advantage of that time, that moment of time that you have, and you better submit to God, because there's people that have dropped dead every single day. Heart attack. I worked with a man I found out today, I used to work with him at the Italian Steakhouse. Back in 2019, he was like 28 years old. He died, straight up died from a heart attack. And he was just a young man. Young man. And you know what? He's done. It's over. His soul has been acquired of him that day. When your soul is going to be acquired of you? I know the Lord knows when your soul is going to be acquired of you. But you don't know. That's why today is the day of salvation. Today's the day to seek the Lord while he may be found. Praise the living God today. I'm not here to tickle your ears. I'm here to tell you the truth and that your sin separates you from God and you better repent. You better stop supporting the things that God hates and you better start hating the things that God hates and start loving the things that God loves. That God loves holiness. He loves those that love the Lord, that keep his commandments and show him worthy to be praised. Are you praying to the Lord Jesus Christ, or are you just living for yourself? Being a bunch of homo supporters and, uh, and drunkards and uh, satisfying your flesh and sin. How is it you're living your life? Your life, you've been given a free will. God gave you a free choice to do whatever you want. But guess what? You're gonna, there are consequences that are going to come. And they're going to come sooner than you think. Life is but a vapor of time. I remember when I was a young man, man oh man, now I'm an old man, and I was like yesterday, I was 23 years old, running around this town, getting loaded, fornicating, getting drunk, and making babies out of wedlock. Not today. I finally wind up and give my life to the Lord like you should. Instead, you'd rather go hang out at the community pervert hangout spot, the Ukiah Brewing Company, that uh, they encourage all this sexual 
dysfunction. They even have male strippers and strippers and, and bands that play their filthy satanic music. Uh, they encourage drunkenness, uh, brewing their own alcohol. You know, the Bible says that no drunkard has any inheritance in God's kingdom. Is that you? Are you a drunkard? It's pretty common to be a drunk. I know, I know, I know, I know. I used to be a drunkard, a drug addict, and a porno freak, and a, and a hand handbagging. You know, I used to be all that stuff. A hand homosexual. You know, I used to hide out and get loaded on methamphetamines and, and stare at women in lust and, you know, just, you know, just being a sick, perverted, ungodly, uh, living it up for the world. And, and what happens? What happens? Well, what happens is, is uh, you're leading yourself to destruction, to eternal uh, torment, the lake of fire, if you don't turn from those things and give them up. Obviously, I have turned from my sins. Obviously, I do not go back to my sins. I don't entertain the thought. I know what temptation is, and I know temptation is not a sin. But when you give in to your temptation, then it becomes sin. And then you surely show that you do not love God. Surely show that you do not love God if you fall into sin. It's a sure sign that you do not love the Lord if you give in to sin. Your Jesus Christ does not exist. Those that love the Lord obey Him, and they, they turn from all temptations, and they give, they always bring every tough body to captivity, and then there's the obedience of Christ, the one true living God, the one that died for the sins of the world, the one that died for you because all has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Don't you think God is worthy of your life? Yeah, well, absolutely He is, considering He made that full payment for you. You and 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 you, and you, and you all have sinned in Jesus Christ. Loved you while you were yet a sinner, the Lord Jesus Christ died for you. And what do you do? You go on living your life, filled with the goodness of the creation, but yet you don't even give your do his credit due or do his credit. The Lord Jesus Christ, who is worthy to be praised. What's your first commandment? You know, nothing comes before God. Not a thing comes before God. What do you do? Put this filthy establishment. And your life of sin before the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what you do with your life? Well, you're going to meet God one day. Everybody's going to meet God one day. God's not this all loving. Well, He's all love, but with His love comes His wrath. And praise the living God that He's not going to allow a bunch of sinners into His kingdom. Because you're not willing to get a change of heart and change of mind if you're living in sin. So why, why should God let you in his kingdom if you're not willing to submit to him? You can love God or you can hate God. That's all your free will choice. Or you can deny the fact that God even exists. That's your free will choice. But it doesn't make the fact that you're creating the image of God if you put his laws on your heart. And you're going to have no excuse on that day. The Bible is very clear. You already know you have no excuse. You better wake up. Drunkers, hotheads, porno freaks. There's a day called Judgment Day coming. You're gonna meet one day. You're gonna meet. You're all stuck tied now. You're full of pride now. That's cool. God gave you a free will. You can do that, my friend. But you're gonna be God. I don't know what you're coming at me, but usually when somebody comes by me like you, you're, you'll come at me uh, against the Lord, cursing me out for what I'm doing. Now, if you love the Lord, man, you should change to what your clothes you're wearing. The tattoos are forgivable, but you need to stop getting them if you're gonna get them anymore. God's willing to forgive you, sir, if you give your life to him. You're creating the image of God for his glory. Stop serving the devil if that's what you're doing, my friend. Open rebuke is better than secret love. I'm openly rebuking you if that needs to be done. Some people you need to have compassion. With others, you got to reach into the fire and pull them out. I needed somebody to reach into the fire and pull me out. For me to come to full repentance, praise the living God. Praise God. I take everything that I have and I need you to glorify God. 
praise the living God. Praise God. Money means nothing. If you're not glorifying God, what 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 you get your money when you got it if you glorify God? It's the flesh of the switching. Nobody should go hungry. No, nobody should be on the street. But we should be taking in any drug addicts and these and these and these people that are living against or breaking God's laws, and we just bring them in and love them. To bring them to sobriety. Don't you think sobriety is the way to go? That's the way God wants you to go. that right there I'm not just gonna let it blow down the road but somebody blessed me with that hundred dollar bill praise God If I have to forsake the pleasures of the world like I have, 
God, you should. Whether you believe or not, it don't matter. God is, God's book is here. His holy commandment is here. It's not going nowhere. But you're going to go somewhere. You're going to be either stretched by the book, and you're going to be in eternity separated from God, reflecting on the, on, on, on the word of God, and all the opportunities that you had, it's never going to go away under torment, or you're going to be living with the word of God, living with the Lord, and in heaven, being filled with the Holy Ghost, fully filled. As much as Jesus Christ and that new body that he has when he goes from the grave, that's going to be you. You're going to be right there full, in full glory of God. You're going to be God in full glory. Except there's only one difference. You're going to be glorifying God. You're not going to be glorifying yourself. You're going to be transformed into a, a new man, a new woman, with a new heart, and a new body that cannot be destroyed. And you're going to be present with the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Or are you going to be resurrected on the day of judgment, bound hand and foot, with a new glorified body that can't be destroyed, and then, then be cast into hell fire after judgment has been laid down on you? Oh, but God, did we prophesy in your name? Did we do many wondrous works? And then what Jesus Christ going to say to you? Depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Now's the time. Now's the time to wake up. Stop living in sin. You know the Lord Jesus Christ is keeping a record of every idle thought. If you're not talking about the... God says he's going to judge you by your tongue. Are you living for the Lord? The Lord? Is, it, is the scriptures coming off your tongue? If it's not, if the scriptures are not coming off your tongue every day, and you're not glorifying God every day, you're not glorifying God. You might go to God every once in a while and give a few things here and there, and then you forget about it the rest of the week and you go, oh, guess what? Oh, it's Sunday. Come on. Come on, kids. Come on, wife. Or come on, myself, yourself. Let's go to church. I'm going to go to church today. Let's go sing gospel hymns and, and pray and, and, and listen to a sermon. And then what do you do the rest of the week? You should be living on fire for the Lord every day. You should be fighting your rest in the Lord Jesus Christ every day. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is our Lord, and He's our Sabbath. He is our rest, and you are to obey Him and keep Him every day. And obedience to the Lord is love. To obey the Lord is love. It's not a burden to obey God. That burden is life. Considering that your flesh might tempt you every once in a while, it's way life. Praise the living God. Praise the living God today. Praise the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not here to pray. I'm here to preach. People uh, want to come against me like, what are you doing? You're out here. You know what God says? You don't see this on the street and, and proclaim the gospel. Talking the Preaching the gospel. That's what God commands the true believers to do. Praise the living God. But on the other hand, we got people that want to consider what I'm doing is praying. And I'm not praying. I say my prayers for the closet, like God tells me to do. I'm out here to preach, to tell you to turn from your sin, because there's a day called Judgment Day coming, and I don't want you to go to hell. I want you to be saved. I want you to glorify God. I want to glorify God with you. How loving, more loving can I be? That's the most loving thing, considering that we are all praying the image of God, and we're going to pray to glorify God. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Repeat, praise the living God. I don't know what your church has been telling you, but I know the Bible calls, calls us to be holy. That's why you need to read the Bible. That's why you need to open the Bible. You don't need to, you don't need to learn by no man. You don't need to... To, to turn in YouTube or, or whatever and, 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 and worry about scripture by no man, you can open up the word of God and see what it says. Take it for what it says. The Bible says a child can understand a lot of, a lot of this stuff. Literally, a little child can understand. Yeah, that's it. Praise the living God, man. Praise the living God. God bless you, my friend. God bless you. Amen. Yes, I'm standing firm on the rock. 
the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the foundation that you ought to be standing on, that you can build your, your whole house, your whole life on. Because that's the only rock that's going to stand. If you're not standing on the rock of Christ, Jesus Christ, when He comes, you're going to perish. He's going to run you all up, all those that have been. And He's going to stomp you out, the Bible says. God's going to stomp out the children of disobedience. I, I, you know, look at that white church, the grace of his wrath. He's going to come out and boom, boom, do like grace under his feet. He's going to smash you out. That day's coming. When he parts the sky and you take that mark of the beast, you're going to be that one that's going to take the mark of the beast, are you? God's going to come down and, and stomp you out. There's no hope if you give unto you give unto the world on that day. Right now, there's hope. Right now, I don't know if anybody in the United States that have took in that mark. But I know that they're enforcing certain things in other countries. And I don't know if that's the mark of the or not. But I know when it does come, um, you're going to have to make that choice. Some of you are going to be like, yeah, I'll take it. I'm going to be like, uh, uh, yeah, this guy's going to do the same. So, so, the Antichrist is here. You know, the, uh, the, Muslim, the Muslim God. The Muslim God is going to be here. And it's going to get into his ways. And then it's going to get real bad for those that won't take his mark. Because he wants to own, the devil wants to own everybody. He wants to own, he wants to know who you are, where you're at. He wants you. And if you're not willing to take his mark, he's going to kill you. They're going to lose their lives. You won't be able to buy those or anything like that. You won't be able to provide for your family no more if you don't take his mark. If you're not willing to sacrifice your own life, for the Lord, regardless of who you've got to take care of, if you're not willing to lay your life down for the Lord, before all things out there, if it's your child, your husband, your wife, your, your friends, your brethren, whatever it might be, if you're not willing to leave, let God be king of kings of your life and the Lord of your life, you're not worthy of his kingdom. Praise the living God that he makes it that clear in his gospel, in his word. Praise the living God. That we have examples of men who died for the faith, who were skinned alive, who had their hands chopped off. They were burned at the stake. They were crucified. This is what happened to the truth of the disciples. They died. Obviously, they died because they knew the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Holy Ghost gave them that spirit, came down upon heaven, and filled them up because Jesus Christ said if he didn't go, to heaven, he wished the Holy Spirit would be able to come down. We wouldn't have been able to be in the with the Ghost, the Holy Ghost. When you say you got the strength, that was Jesus Christ. Which is the cross, you know, you can't deny the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Well, for one thing, you didn't have the Holy Ghost. But that's when Jesus Christ rose from the grave. And that's when Father's witnesses, seeing him ascend to heaven, 500, and he spent 50 days, 40 days down here, and after he rose from the grave, plenty of witnesses, plenty of witnesses, over 500. And then what happened on the day of Pentecost? 3,000 were saved, I believe. The Holy Spirit was poured out, and it wasn't, and it wasn't how many disciples were happening to them. They died. They died for preaching the gospel. They were just out preaching the truth, telling people to turn from their sins, what I'm doing right now. The Word of God. I don't have the Word of God. All of it. I can preach anything in the Word of God, and, I, and, 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 and it's what I'm supposed to be doing. All holy in Scripture. That's it. These are one of our greatest Scriptures. Every day, there's every second of every day, there's a couple of people dying. 
How many hundreds of thousands of people died today? How many of those people are glorifying God with their lives? How many? If you're not glorifying God, you know where you're going to go when you die. But do you care? Probably not. But you're going to care. The moment you take your last breath, you're going to be in fear and trembling. Trembling like a little coward, little baby. Why? Well, because then you're going to really know what you already knew. Except then it's going to be in your face. And you're going to have no more opportunity to return from the, from the sin and give your life to the Lord. Because if you done took your last breath, it's over. Your, your faith has been sealed. If you don't want to lose, uh, live a holy life in this life, you're not going to live in a holy in God's kingdom the next. Without holiness, no man or woman will see God. Somebody says, well, we what? More, more loving? More what? How, how more loving can I be if you're sin? If you die in your sin, you're going you're gonna to perish. How more loving can I be if I kill you? Turn from your sin. Now, if I just come out here and just love you and give you the life of the Lord, I'd be lying to you. I wouldn't be preaching the gospel to you. The Bible says that God loves them that obey him. Literally, it doesn't say that he loves everybody. It says that he died for us while we were yet sinners. Yes. Praise the living God. Well, what else did he have to do? He created us to give us a free will and all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He had to do something. And if you're willing to bring it in your sins today, and you can back to himself, and you can submit to him. And to submit to the Lord is to submit to what you were created to be. The image that you were created to be. It's the natural way. It's the normal way. It's the real function of how you're supposed to be. It's to be like God. That's all of it. But you found pleasure in sin. And you know the Bible says, because we have sinned, we've sent the Holy Spirit. And God, God cannot be in the presence of sin. He can't be in the presence of sin. you got to start seeking the Lord before it's too late. I can't stress this enough. I can't pr um, proclaim this enough. All I can do is to say it over and over and over again. Regardless, I should be a broken record for the gospel. If you're not learning to turn from your sin, then i got to keep preaching turn from your sin. You know the world's in darkness, right? That the world shows the darkness over the light? Do you know this thing? The Bible is clear on that. Even if you don't glorify God, you, I'm talking to you. And you know that you don't glorify God. You don't need me to tell you. But I'm telling you, because I love you, to seek the Lord while he may be found. The Lord wants to find you today. But you gotta be want you have to want to be found. You gotta have to make that free will choice because God's not gonna force himself on you. And you have all chosen to take your free will and, and sin against God. Why don't you take that same free will and really choose to live for the Lord? Right? Right, right, right. And he means. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. He is so awesome. The Lord Jesus Christ is so awesome. Woo! Praise the living God. This is a day that the Lord has made. Praise God. Praise God. Keep your life going. Now it's time. Stop thinking about it. Good. That's why you're created. You're created for God to glorify Him. He wants to glorify you, but you gotta forsake your sin. You gotta be willing to suffer because we live in a, a dark, dark, dark world. An ungodly, sin loving, God hating world that we live in today. Everybody around us is glorifying themselves. Some of you are. There's an exception with a very few of you. Very, very few of you. And I'm talking about those of you that love the Lord in obedience and you're always going out um, telling your neighbor about the Lord Jesus Christ because their blood is on your hands. Did you know that every living soul's blood is on my hands? Did you know that? That I am actually commanded to go out and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ? All scripture, not just, you know, taking truth, but what makes you sound what sounds like what your pastor might teach you. 
you know the judgment starts with the house of God? That's it, man. The house of God, that's when judgment starts. For good reason. Are our churches peace and repentance? Praise the living God. Praise God. You know, he is the house of God. The fact that he would actually die for us to set us straight. Set us down that straight and narrow. And, and that's your desire, I know. Because when I give my life to the Lord, I want to walk that straight and narrow path. Praise the living God. I want to obey the gospel. Praise the living God. To me, that is life. That is like the most greatest feeling is practicing righteousness. Hallelujah. The Bible says he who practices righteousness is righteous. Ow. Ow. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Woo. Yeah, I'm a fool. I'm a fool for Jesus, praise the living God. I might look foolish to you, but you know what? You're the one that's going to perish. You're the crazy one. Yeah, I've been brainwashed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a good washing. It's the washing. Praise the living God. You know what I know what's crazy? is a sinner who's not willing to repent their sin and, and where you're going to go. That's crazy. Going to the lake of fire, getting crashed into the hellfire because you love your sin. You don't want to serve the holy and righteous God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You'd rather live your life, living it up, being a, a, a follower of the world, uh, being concerned about what the world has to say about you. You want the world to prove you. You won't go out and step out there for the Lord and sacrifice your blood. It's not all right, but your name's coming. But what's right now is the time that you can get your life and start being right under the Lord. Praise the living God. Praise the living God for the fact that you're actually hearing. Hearing the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross. And that you, can, you still have the opportunity to give your life to him. To draw nigh unto the Lord so that he will draw nigh unto you. You better cleanse your hands, you sinner. You better cleanse your hands, you sinner. You better start purifying your heart and stop being double-minded. You better start speaking the Lord Jesus Christ. You stop living for trying to live for the Lord and stop trying to live for the world. That's all sir. And it's all for sin. Don't you know? Do you not know that friendship with the world does you an enemy of God? You want to be a friend of the world? You want to live as the world lives in their perverted lifestyle? That's your free will choice to do. That's your free will choice to do. If you want to live in sin, God bless you with your finger, man. Stop it. Jesus still dies for your pathetic, sinful heart, your heart's heart. God wants to forgive you if you give your life to him. Praise the living God. Praise God. Blessings. Blessings after blessings. Well, that makes it, that makes it, that makes it better. Get a couple of keys, they'll come by and say, Praise God, and then the woman right before them flip me off. Okay? It's your, it's your life. It's your free will. If you want to walk around and preach the flesh, that's your free will choice to do. But don't expect to be a God kingdom. He's coming. But you still have that grace and mercy in your life. Praise the living God. Praise the living God, that grace and mercy. It's so awesome. The fact that He still hasn't wiped you out yet. So, so worthy. So, such a loving God that, you know, that even one sin is worthy of eternal separation from God. But yet, you let you sin day after day after day after day. And yet, you're still. And some people get to do it 100 years of their life. Some people get to do it. Well, the only thing you see me is like, it don't matter. It don't matter how old you are, you still have plenty of time to give your life to the Lord. Plenty of time. I know there's those that are aren't accountable. We've talked about little babies. The Bible says that the heaven is full of little children. I would just imagine considering that um, since 1973, I don't know how many millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions, and millions of babies have been aborted. I don't know, that's a lot. Hundreds of millions, probably. And if you throw in birth control, 
Boy, you're getting up into the hundreds and hundreds of millions of babies being aborted and killed. Why? Yeah. Why? For convenience? Couldn't get her fornication? Because you don't want to marry the woman that you're willing to sleep with? The fellow that you truly love her? Don't you love that woman that you're sleeping with? Like you fornicate with her, you're going to send her and yourself to hellfire. Oh, maybe you're going to be tormented by demons. 
for eternity. Maybe that's what's going to happen. Because uh, hell was made for the fallen angels. It was not made for man. But unfortunately, that's where you're going to go if you don't turn from your sin. Unfortunately, you're going to go to hell fire if you're not willing to sacrifice your flesh and start living a holy life, a spiritual life, a life filled with the gospel. The word of God, that one word is going to save you. And it's uh, 66 books with over 40 authors. Praise the living God, now by holy men of old, not sinful men, who spoke under the inspiration of God. Praise the living God. God can do whatever He wants. God can make you drunk if He wanted to. Literally, God can do whatever He wants. If God... Literally, God... If He can close the world in six days to make you into a sentence to curse you in a sentence, God can definitely get to Himself in this world and become a man to be born of a virgin. Absolutely. No doubt about it. There's no doubt about it that God could actually do this for the love of the world that He has. The fact that He loved the world so much that He actually emptied Himself of His glory and, and became that innocent little lamb that was slain. Are you going to pay with your own blood? You're going to. If you don't live for the Lord, almost all things were purged in blood. But without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Don't pay with your own blood. Live for the Lord. You know the one that we keep talking to. But, you know, I guess there's a lot of pleasure in your sin. I mean, literally, I mean, if you want to put your sin before God, well, I mean, I see some pleasure. I've been there. But there is nothing like living for the Lord. Your sins are nothing compared to when you give your life to the Lord and start living according to Him. I can't even tell you how to imagine the fact that you give your life to the Lord. I can't tell you. you got to experience that for yourself. you got to want to experience that for yourself. But you find pleasures in your little bit of perverted lifestyle, and your drunkenness, and your high, and your community, um, your community guidelines that you live by, when you should be living by the gospel of Jesus Christ, but you're not willing to forsake your life of sin and, and, and your friendship with the world because you want the world's approval, well, have a nice life. This is the closest you're going to get to the Lord, right here. This is it. This is the best it's going to get for you if you don't want to live a life of righteousness and holiness. This is the best that you're going to get. And some of you are blessed pretty well. But then, at the end, what, what is it? the whole world to use your, your soul in the end. What is it? That you lose your soul, that's what it is. And your soul is eternal. Praise the living God today. Right now you act all tough and stuck up 
Why didn't I see this before? Why didn't I just forsake my space before? But no, you still go in. But you can't experience or know what I'm talking about if you don't do it. You don't even understand what I'm saying to you because you haven't done it. But I'll tell you what, when you do do it, and you see me out here, you're going to come up to me. I wouldn't be surprised if you'll be crying with joy that I'm the man came out here and actually told you what to do. And that's the church of your sin and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the living God.
But you don't have to keep rebelling against God. You can still give your life to the Lord. He loves you. He died for you while you were yet a sinner. He did. He died for you. Praise God. Praise God.
life is but a vapor of time and in the judgment. God commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day when the Lord is going to judge the world. He's going to judge you one day. It's a coming. It's a coming. Warning. Judgment day is coming. Warning. Judgment day is coming. Uh, a day that you like to suppress the truth, huh? Another day you think to suppress the truth and righteousness? Or is this going to be a day <laughs> when you get your eyes open and start turning from your sins? I know, I know, but I love you, and I want you to be saved, ma'am, that's all. That's 
did. I just want you to be safe. No other reason why I'm out here. Matter of fact, I love you more than that man who's going to go upstairs with you and drink with you if that's what you're going to do. And you're probably going to give yourself to him. I'm just saying. I don't know. But I know when I was living, that's her lifestyle. That's what I was doing. I was, I was doing whatever I told you to get down from a woman's pants. But today, I'll do whatever the judge that pleases the Lord. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. I'm not about getting into some whore's camp. I'm not about being a whoremonger. I'm about serving the Lord Jesus Christ. I gave up my whoremonger days. I stopped letting the whore uh, gratify my flesh. I give my life to the Lord. Living as a saint, the Bible says. Living as a saint. Are you a saint today? You know there's only two types of people in this world. You're either a sinner or you're a saint. There's no such thing as a sin and saint. If you're living in sin, you're a sinner. Plain and simple. You are a sinner. Sinner, sinner, sinner. And life is going to come to an end soon enough. You better repent for God, or God, or tell you to take your last breath. Praise the living God. Praise God. Praise God. You have a nice night, ma'am. If you can hear me, I want you to know that I love you and I want you to be saved. God bless you. God is awesome. Now I don't have a job and I got time and the finances to do what I truly love. And that's to glorify God. Praise the living God. I got seven days a week to reach the lost. Praise God. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Life is but a vapor of time. Seek the Lord today. Judgment day is coming. Judgment day is coming. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Praise the living God. Um, a little earlier I left it on top of my car and drove off. You know how many times I've driven off? Lost a couple of Bibles that way. Lost a backpack with probably a couple thousand tracks that way. You know? But who cares? It's just stuff. Everything's replaceable except your soul. So you better seek the Lord, man. Praise the living God. Praise God. I love you guys. Please give your life to the Lord, man. <laughs> Please. Man, don't make this labor be in vain, which, you know, God is, he's going to do a wondrous work through, through you true believers and saints. You know, let it, let that fruit out up there and bear that fruit you know praise the living God let that tree you be full of fruit holy fruit good fruit praise God <laughs>